Welcome back, everyone. Um, in this video, we're going to evaluate uh, the integral of e to the negative x squared dx. Uh, we're going to do that using series and then use that to approximate the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared. And we're going to do it accurate to 0 0.001 here. And so this is an important example to consider because e to the negative x squared is an example of a function which has a non-elementary antiderivative. The fundamental theorem of calculus isn't going to be, we're not going to find a way of describing the antiderivative without using some notion of calculus, right? So we've had to approximate these things in the past. But it turns out integral uh, series provide us a better way of trying to do this because we have a Maclaurin series for e to the x. This looks like the sum, where n ranges from 0 to infinity, of x to the n divided by n factorial. This also tells us how we can do a Maclaurin series for e to the negative x squared because we just replace the x with a negative x squared, in which case we get the sum as n equals 0 to infinity. We're going to get negative x squared to the n over n factorial, which this becomes an alternating sum, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n over n factorial as n goes from 0 to infinity. And so if we write down the first couple terms here, we're going to get 1. Uh, we're going to get minus, uh, minus x squared over 1 factorial. So that's just, just the 1 there. Uh, and so we're going to get plus x to the fourth over 2 factorial, which is 2. Uh, we're next going to get x. It's, it's alternating. So we get negative x, cute, x to the sixth over 3 factorial. That's a 6. I'm just going to write down what these factorials turn out to be. Uh, we get a 2 right there. Uh, then we're going to get plus x to the eighth over 4 factorial, which is 24. We're going to get minus x to the tenth over 5 factorial, which is 120. And we're going to get plus x to the 12th over 720, which is 6 factorial. And that's probably enough here. And we could keep on going, 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 going if we wanted to. And so if we want to compute the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared dx, what we can do is we can then substitute in for this, the function e to the negative x squared. We can substitute its Maclaurin series because the two functions are equal to, to each other on their interval of convergence, which is actually all real numbers for this exponential here. So let's integrate this thing. This gives us an x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over, we're going to get 2 times 5, uh, minus x to the seventh over 6 times 7. Uh, then we're going to get plus x to the eighth over 24 times 8. I'm sorry, that should be a 9. x to the ninth gives you get 8 plus 1. Uh, minus x to the 11th divided by 120 times 11. And then lastly, you're going to get plus x to the 13th over 13 times 720. Uh, go from there if you want to. Again, this will just keep on going on and on and on. Now, admittedly, when you take an antiderivative, there should be a plus a constant. But as this is a definite integral, we don't need that constant. It'll just cancel out anyways. And we can evaluate this from 0 to 1. When you plug in zero, everything will vanish because everything is a multiple of multiple of x. That's the center of the power series. So you can see there's actually some advantage by changing your center of the, the Maclaurin series. You might actually want it to be something centered at something else, like the lower limit of your integral, which in this case is zero. When you plug in one, all powers of one will just be one itself. So this thing will become one minus one third plus one over a tenth minus one over 42 plus uh, when we do the ninth power there, right, we're going to end up with 24 times 9. That is 216. So you get 1 right there. Then we're going to get minus 1 over, we're going to get 120 times 11 this time, which is 1,320. Uh, next, we get 1 over, what's that, 13 times 720. Uh, that's like 9,360. And we can keep on going if we need to. Like so. This is the exact answer. This is not an estimate right now. This is an exact answer. If we put this together, this would look like the sum as n ranges from 0 to infinity. Uh, this is an alternating sum, so it gets a negative 1 to the n on top. In the denominator, you get a factorial. Um, you're going to get n factorial times that by uh, 2, what is that going to be? 2n plus 1, because you also get this odd number. That 2n plus 1 was the consequence of the antiderivative power rule we had from before. 
And so we get something like this. And so this, yeah, this is the answer. This is the exact answer. Now we probably need to estimate this to get our, to get this area under the curve here. And so we're gonna estimate this using some partial sum, right? Uh, but what, what partial sum should we use, S sub N? Well, we're supposed to, our, our error is supposed to be accurate the remainder rn this is supposed to be accurate to 0 0.001 or 1 tenth or 1 1 1000th one right here and so we'll see in the next lecture le uh, lecture 48 uh, a technique one could use to because what we're, what we're here is trying to estimate this thing using taylor's inequality which is appropriate here but something that's a lot easier is that this is an alternating series right here it's alternating it's a convergent alternating series. So it'll be bounded above just by the next term in the sequence. So when, when does our term, when do our terms get sufficiently small, right? The terms of the sequence are gonna look like one over, uh, we get n plus one factorial times two n plus three. And we want this to be less than 1000. Give myself a little bit more space here. And so taking reciprocals, we want n plus one factorial times two n plus three to be greater than a thousand. And so looking at the numbers we've already done here, that happens right here. And so this was zero, one, two, three, four, five. So at this moment, at the fifth stage, we're gonna get that um, n plus one needs to be greater than or equal to five which says n needs to be greater than or equal to four. So what we can actually do is we can get away with just taking the first four terms right here. I guess there's five of them because we start at zero. But if we just take this number right here, one minus one third plus one tenth minus one forty second plus one over two sixteen, that number right here, which is approximately the same thing as 0.7475, this answer right here, which is this, again, the sum of those five numbers, that is accurate to three decimal places, which gives us the, uh, the desired level of accuracy. And if you were to try this thing with Simpson's rule, it would take uh, it would take more than just five care five five calculations to get this level of accuracy. And so we see a very nice improvement when one when it, when it comes to approximation theory using power series. There are good friends, and they can be very useful uh, to compute antiderivatives when the anti sorry it, it can be very useful to use a McLaurin series to compute uh, a definite integral when the indefinite integral is otherwise difficult to compute.